Greetings, uh, YouTube. So here, here is a paranormal story from my childhood, and this is a true story. And I, I can't really confirm if it's paranormal, but it's paranormal to me because um, it's definitely not normal. <laughs> um, it all started back in 1980, maybe 1981. I was uh, 10, maybe 11 years old. I'm 53 now. Um, and I lived in Atlanta, Georgia, and my with my mom. I just moved there uh, because my father and my mother broke up you know, when I was like four years old. And I was constantly moving back and forth between Peekskill, New York, which is 60 miles up the Hudson River from New York, right next to Sleepy Hollow. Very, very creepy place. About as creepy as it can get. I mean, that's where the story of the Headless Horseman came from. Ooh, pretty police car. So, um... Yeah, so the, um, I was used to being creeped out, you know, like I would walk around, back in the 70s when I was a kid, um, you could walk around in Peekskill and find, like, wells and old walls that were built out of river rocks and just creepy stuff. This is near Mohegan Lake. Look that up on Google Maps. It's a uh, it's outside of Peekskill, you know, right? So it was very creepy. But I moved to an even creepier place. Um when I moved in with my mom in Buckhead, Georgia. Buckhead is near um Atlanta on the north side. And back in the 80s, there was this apartment on Biscayne Drive called Arbogate Apartments. And now they're condos, but but it was called um, Arbogate Apartments, and it was right along this little creek. My, my apartment, right outside the back porch, was a creek, just a little tiny creek um, that ran into Peachtree Battle Creek, which was a larger creek. And that's where all the bloodshed from the Civil War happened. This is where Sherman burned Atlanta. When he came into Atlanta, all the able-bodied men from Atlanta stood along this creek and tried to defend it from Sherman. And they all died. And I'm sure they were quite bitter when they died and quite afraid. And when I lived there, you know, my friends, there was a trench all along this river, and they, they would go along the trench, and they found old bullets, big-ass fucking bullets from their muskets and swords and stuff. And um, so, yeah, this, this was a horrible, tragic place, and most of the most of this, uh, paranormal activity that's found is, is in Civil War hotspots, but this is the hottest of the hotspots. This is, it's even called Peachtree Battle Creek, named after the battle. Um, so the, yeah, this horrible battle took place right outside of my back porch. And um, I could feel it, the, the instant I got there, the instant, the first day I got off the airplane, and I went to my mom's town home and um, there was a, a bunk bed waiting for me, you know, because my sister, she followed me down later. She came later and, and, and she moved into my room and she, was, she slept in the, the bed underneath and I slept on the bed above on this bunk bed. And um, the bunk bed had a little slat running along, you know, to keep me from falling off. 
It was a good 10 inches, 12 inches high, you know. And um, I would sleep up there, and I and I just got this really creepy feeling. Every every time I ran up and down the stairs at night, I could feel something chasing me. And uh, I know many of you out there have felt that before. Like you you're a kid, and 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 it's dark, and you're running around the house. And you feel like something's chasing you. Well, I really felt that. Big time. But what's more is I felt when I moved in here, there was a feeling that I felt that started when I moved in. And it left when I moved out. It only happened when I lived in this apartment. But I swear to God, I felt like I was going insane. I mean, I was only 10 years old, and that's quite a, a heavy feeling to feel for a 10-year-old. Like, I don't, I've never... That's totally based. Like, I, nobody's ever... I've never heard of that before. It was something that came from, me, from within. From within me. And I seriously felt like I was going insane. And, and I was... I was really scared in that place. Not just from the feeling that I got in that house, but that I was going insane. And the reason I felt that was because we had, this was in the 80s, and we didn't have no internet back then. There was not even uh, even the beginnings of computers or computer games back then. This, this all we had was a black and white television downstairs a little tiny black and white television and I would whenever I watched TV on this television I felt this horrible feeling like I was falling it's almost like vertigo like the the fear of falling I was feeling this vertigo but not falling downward but falling in inward to the TV like I was falling into the TV like it was sucking me in and I was falling inward towards it. And the longer I let that go, if I just let it go, the worse it would get at an exponential rate. It was horrible. It was a horrible feeling, man. I can't even begin to describe how scared I was. And the feeling of fear and falling like that. Feel that the fear that you would fall feel when you fell off a building was the feeling that I fell felt but I was falling inward towards the television, like it was sucking me in. And it's interesting that there was that, you know, that movie Poltergeist that had, you know, the the television, uh, the white the white noise and the shh, you know, because because I swear to God that had something to do with it. And it's interesting. We, uh, my mom actually introduced me to a guy uh, named. George Meek who thought he could talk to the dead he he created what what he called the spirit time he traveled the world trying to learn how to talk to the dead and he thought he created this thing called the spirit com and he was talking to this guy that he thought was uh, in the afterworld he even thought he talked was talking to his wife after she died and uh, you can look it up online George Meek M E E K uh, there's a picture that he took of uh, like a screenshot of his wife in the afterlife but I'm getting off track so um, I I felt like um, maybe maybe they were fucking with us I mean there are many um, patents that, that they use to fuck with people through the television and um I could remember hearing the television come on like the pss, like the high pitched sound from upstairs. Even though my sister was watching the television downstairs, I could hear it when she turned it on and off. And she would not sleep in my room at night. She would sleep down in the living room with the TV on all night long. She would sleep, and she she did that all her life. And she got into a lot of weird shit like when she was younger with the, with the Ouija board. Um, that's a whole nother story 
Like she got into, uh, started playing with a Ouija board one night and um, she contacted what she thought was uh, this demon that said he was Jesse James. And then later, you know, in life, she, her firstborn child, she named it Jesse. So, yeah, weird stuff. And uh, I was very scared that night they were playing with the Ouija board, I remember. But anyway, um, she she would sleep downstairs with the TV set on, on, on the couch with the TV, the black and white TV set on uh, all night long. And uh, I would sleep upstairs. It's a townhome, so you had to walk up the stairs. And I was on the upstairs bed, and, and I was always being chased up and down the stairs by some scary creature, right, that you couldn't see, and, um, I, I remember one night, um, I woke up the next morning, and I had bruises all down the side, the right side of my body, like, all down the right side of my, my, my thigh, and my ankle, my shin, and, and my shoulder, like I had fallen off of my bed but I I did remember falling off my bed and I've never had any instances of being caught walking in my sleep or anything and there's that that huge thing that I would have had to f jump over to fall off my bed and um, and I was feeling that creepy feeling <laughs> in that place all the time and then there was that insanity that started to, to form whenever I'd watch the television in that place but thankfully we had a cat and I believe you know they say cats can um, protect you from demons or that they, they can they have this magical power to see things that we don't see you know uh, the Egyptians believed that cats would protect them, and they had, you always see the pharaohs with cats next to them. Well, we had a cat and, uh, named Smokey, and I, I would hold that cat, and that feeling would go away. Whenever I got that weird feeling from watching, from when I was watching the television, that vertigo feeling, I would hold my cat, and the feeling would go away. And I just, I loved that cat so much because I swear to God, it saved my life one night when I thought I was going to go nuts. I mean, I, it was so bad. And, and what brought it on was um, back in the 80s, uh, the Omni International downtown in Atlanta, They back before it was the CNN Center, um, they had what's called the, the World of Sid and Marty Croft. Look that up. And Sid and Marty Croft, they were these creepy-ass... Um, they made a TV show, but they would dress in these costumes that were really creepy. And um, I remember my mom took me there, and there was this one ride up at the top of the place where you would get in a ball, a giant silver ball, and it would take you through a pin, giant pinball machine. And I was I was terribly afraid of getting into it, and so. My mom left me out at the front of the entrance and went in by herself. And that was very unlike my mom. My mom was very caring. And she really loved me and she was very protective. But for some reason, she went in there and she was very rude about it. She was like, well, if you don't want to go in there, you can just sit out here. And she went in there and went through the ride. And I, I remember sitting out in front of the ride, like being really scared and, and, and feeling bad about myself for not having the courage to go into this this ride I was only just a I was like a 10 year old kid you know and she left me all alone at the Omni you know like this dangerous fucking place and and uh, I waited like fucking 15 minutes and she finally came out and uh, we went about our business and went home but but you know even like 20 30 years later after I brought this up she doesn't remember any of that and um I thought that was pretty weird that she didn't remember any of that. But anyway, um, and it was very unlike her. Like, she was possessed or something. But that night, when I went home, 
and I went to sleep in my bed, I had a horrible nightmare that I was in a silver pinball machine, a giant silver ball, and I was being shot around by a pinball in a pinball that was in, in a giant pinball machine that was being played by a huge demon, like a your typical devil, you know, red skin and you know the weird ears and the long tail and everything and the horns. And uh, he was laughing at me, and and I was being shot around in this ball. And then I woke up, and I was instantly in this horrible, like mental illness state that that that, was, that, w that would affect me when I normally watch the television. And I would fall into the television. Well, it was happening without the television. It was happening because of the dream, and and I was like. I couldn't get rid of it. I was I thought I was going to go insane that night. I thought I was literally going nuts. And I ran downstairs and my sister to because my sister, you know, was down there sleeping on the couch and I tried to wake her up and she wouldn't wake up. You know, and 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 so I grabbed my kitty cat and I held him tight and I sat in the chair and and, and the feeling went away. Thank God. And I will never ever forget my cat for that like my cat literally saved my life I've literally for many years after that felt like that I owed that cat for saving my life because I, I really thought I was going to go crazy and like lose my mind and be like stuck in a in a rubber rubber cell you know a padded cell as a 10 year old like, I thought I was going to go nuts. I thought there was really something wrong with me. <laughs> but, um, I never felt that feeling again. I, I'm, we moved out of there after that, and I never felt that feeling again. As soon as we moved out of there, it, it went away. Like, I never had that problem again from televisions or anything like that. And so, um,. Thank God, right? But um, an another night, I woke up and I had bruises on not only the all the way down the right side of my body, but all the way down the left side of my body too. And I thought that was really weird. Like I I I had to say something. I don't know why I didn't say anything about it the 